Hey guys, Nathan with Duck River Honey. And today I wanna to give you an update on where I'm at in my apiary. You can see I've got tall hives right now. And if you've been watching, you, you will see that I've been using a double queen system with double screen boards to split hives up that I thought were going to swarm. Uh, I'd move the old queen up above the double screen and that would make the bottom queenless. And hopefully they would make a new queen in an emergency situation. If they did and she started laying, then I could pull the old queen out into a small nuke and recombine all the bees and turn them into the major flow. Um, and I'd have a tremendous population with a hive that probably wouldn't swarm at that point. That has worked and not worked in some cases. Um, I've had several that it has worked on. I've also had a few that did not return a queen in the walkaway portion. So I had to recombine uh, the old queen back with the, the bottom part. Um, I also had one hive where the, the old queen stayed in the bottom and then she recovered and kept her foragers and they swarmed. Um, so I, I actually lost that swarm. They were too high for me to get. So where we're at in the season, it's May 7th. Um, black locust and tulip poplar are going right now. Both of those are major flows for me. And there's a difference in a minor flow and a major flow. And uh, I actually did a video on uh, nectar flows, which YouTube does not recommend to anyone. I, don't, I may need to remake that thing, make it a better video. I'll leave a link to it up here because it, it is worth your time to watch. But there are two resources that I mentioned in that video that are extremely beneficial. I think everybody should do this. Uh, whether you're a new beekeeper, old beekeeper, or, or whatever, everybody should look at this stuff. Uh, the first is on NASA's website, of all things. It's the Honey Bee Net Forage Map. And that allows you to click on your ecoregion, your specific part of North America, and it brings up a list of all of your minor and major nectar sources. The difference being a minor source is a, a sustenance or maintenance source that, you know, a strong colony in some years will make some honey off of it, but not tremendous amounts of honey. And then your major flows are where your honey production comes from. Uh, the second resource would be, uh, I believe it's Honey Plants of North America by John Lovell. That book was published in 1926. I'll leave a link to it in the description as well. With those two resources specifically, you can learn about the plants that are most important in your area. And then you can go into John Lovell's book and learn more about those plants like what you know what weather conditions make a good flow uh, things such as that so really neat stuff and, and it's it's worth taking a look at in my part of tennessee we've got seven flows the biggest of the year is probably tulip poplar black locust can be really good in some years um, tulip poplar is more dependable so we're into tulip poplar and black locust right now, two major flows going at the same time. And that gives me leeway on these hives to recombine and to uh, put bees together. And you know, the bees have got focus right now because there is a huge nectar source out there that's available and they wanna go out and get it. That takes some of the swarming pressure off, not all of it, but it takes some of it off um, a lot of that swarming pressure may turn into super seizures at this point just because there's so much nectar out there that they can get. I think I'm going to have some attrition on queens in all this shuffling that I've done. So I've, I've actually got quite a few, uh, quite a few nukes uh, and swarms that I've caught. Um, you know, I've got some utility bees at, at this point. So I started the season with 23 hives at this point. I'm somewhere around 45 and uh, production colonies probably in the 18 to 20 range and uh, the rest of them will be nukes and swarms that I've caught. So if I notice uh, an issue with one of these big hives, my production hives, I'll dive down into it and see if they're queen right. If they're not, then I'll just combine a nuke with them uh, and try to get them queen right and back to 
you know, boost their population up so that they can make honey during these major flows that I've got going on. So I wanna talk for a second about what my goals are for this year. Um, I try to write down goals. Um, I, I find that I'm a lot more successful in achieving things if I actually write them down and try to stick to it. So my operation, I came out of winter with 23 hives this year and I want to come out of winter next year with somewhere around 40 hives. And I'm putting it that way for a reason because with bees, you're always dealing with percentages, right? Uh, you've got a mating success percentage, you've got a winter loss percentage, you've got all these things. So I try to, try to think what is my end goal and then work backwards from there. So say I want to come out of winter next spring with 40 live hives, 10% uh, death loss, that means I need to go into winter after the fall cull with uh, about 44 or 45. And I am planning to requeen most of my hives this year. Uh, I've got bees that are building up too fast in the spring. I've got bees that want to swarm <laughs> real big. Uh, they really want to swarm and it's a chore to stay ahead of them. And then I've got about five hives that I've identified that are a lot slower bee. They're a more conservative bee. They winter with smaller clusters. They keep a lot of honey in the nest year, you know, year round. And I like that. They're gentle. Uh, they're really nice to work with. And the swarming pressure has been a lot, lot less on those. So what I'm planning to do is after the summer solstice, which is June 21st this year, I think, I'm going to start queen rearing and I'm going to make enough nukes to requeen all my production colonies that I've had to split or um, you know really pull back from swarming and I'm going to make enough nukes that I can take care of my queen loss and attrition through the year. So say I'm at 45 now and that's about where I want to go into winter with all the requeening and, and everything. Um, you know, mating success in, in July and August is quite a bit lower than it would be now um, just because of the predation and uh, dearth and things like that. So I'm figuring a 60 to 70 percent mating success. I probably need to be upwards of 70 nukes, um, 70 hives before I start shrinking back to get to that 45 level um, going into the fall. So that's sort of my plan right now. I'm, I'm going to pick queens from hives that I like, like this one that has not swarmed. Um, this one, I did end up splitting them, but they made honey last year and they did not swarm last year. So this queen's two years old. Um, they're gentle, they winter small, they keep a lot of honey in here. I, I'm gonna select genetics like this and try to put more of that into my operation, get some of the swarminess and the, you know, the more of the Italian strain, I guess, um, where they build up and make a lot of bees and try to swarm on me early in the spring. I'm gonna try to breed some of that out this year. I'm gonna try to really turn over my genetics. Well, you can smell that nectar drying down. It's just, oh, it smells so good. That's a full frame. That is a beautiful sight right there. All that white wax. That is just gorgeous.
I'm testing my luck digging in here. Like I said, the bees are not real happy with the weather the way it is. I just want to pull this one. It looks like a thick frame. Drawing foundations is one of my big goals for this year. That is beautiful stuff. Looks like an amber. It's beautiful. I came into this season with, um, goodness, I should have looked. I bought 90 new supers, and I think I've got about 35 or so left that are not in use right now. I'm going to try to get a lot of those drawn this year. because the spring management system I really want to run is more of a, a checkerboarding technique based off of Walt Wright's work. Uh, Randall Carter at Carter Hill Honeybees runs a similar system. I really want to get to something along those lines, but I've got to have a lot of comb to make that work. I figure for each production colony, I probably need three to four drawn out boxes of comb and I'm not there. Um, I've been expanding the past three years and I ended up, I end up using um, drawn comb to start hives and, and stuff like that. So I'm still building my, my comb base. So that's a big goal this year, um, increasing hive counts, drawing out comb, um, goodness, it, the equipment, end of this to get to around 40 or 50 hives you know, i'm running all mediums so i'm going to have two to three mediums per hive for the high body and then three to four per production colony for supers so right now i've got somewhere around 150 mediums and i figure i may need that many more um you know especially with that the system I'm wanting to run where I'm making nukes and, and new queens in the uh, after the solstice to have young queens in the spring, which are less prone to swarming. Um, also young queens build up faster and just generally do better. So with this system I'm, I'm wanting to run, I'm getting there, you know, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm making progress, but I've still got a, a ways to go. I figure it's gonna take me one to two more years to really turn this operation into what I want it to be. When you've got a hive this tall and this many bees in the top, that's usually a pretty good sign. Now if they've got white wax and some nectar collection going on up here, I'll be pretty happy. lots of bees goodness they're gonna need another super so the weather has been pretty good for bee flight um, but today it's drizzly and yucky and you know the bees are not really getting out but coming up oh my goodness right in the middle of the major flow tulip poplar and black locust we've got a week where it's going to hit 90 degrees several days it's going to be sunny and calm and after today the next chance of rain is not for a week and then there's a just like a 25 percent chance over that next week several days so um, even though i'm looking in here and i'm seeing one two three or four undrawn frames they're getting a box um, just because i won't be here for another week and they could pack this thing out in the next week so i'm gonna be pretty um 
pretty liberal on adding boxes today. Come on, girls, now. Be nice. Yeah, they're drawing that out pretty good. I'll use this as a bait frame to encourage the bees to move up to the next box. A lot of times if you just put a box of foundation, they see that as a barrier and they won't move up there. But if you put a couple of drawn out frames together in the next box up, you can use one. I find two probably works a little better. That gets the bees working up top a lot quicker. I'm six foot three and I think I'm going to need a step ladder next time I look at this hive. <laughs> I have to get on my tippy toes. Oh, I hope it's a good year. Goodness, it's a lot of work. A lot of work. It comes down to the bees making honey. There's nothing I can do to make them do it. I can just ask them. Ooh, a lot of bees. So I added this top box on here six or seven days ago. Let's see if they are doing anything up here. I used one bait frame. Looks like they've just started working. Got a lot of white wax underneath. So they'll be good for a week. Bees don't like this kind of weather. <sighs> All right, guys, I've saved the best for last. I've got my hot hive over here that I dumped out and attempted to requeen. And I know they're gonna be mad today because of the weather, but I need to get into them. I've saved them for last because I don't, they follow me around this whole bee yard and when I get into them. <laughs> um, hopefully that changes, but it's gonna take, you know, it takes six weeks for the foragers to die. So for that population to turn over, if they're queen right, if they didn't kill that queen, it's gonna take a little bit. So these bees have got a good population. Ooh, tremendous population. I 
Hear them rustling their wings. All right, I put a super foundation on top of them. It doesn't look like they have moved up here just yet. Yeah, here they come. Get off my legs. That's a good sign. They are drawing foundations. I find that queenless hives generally don't do a very good job of that. Guys, I would really like to know if they're still queen right. I'm just not up for the punishment today. I'd rather sneak back in here when it's sunny. Most of these bees are out of the hive. <laughs> so, we'll have to wait to find out. I've already been stung a couple times through the pants. I've got bees crawling on me. It's just gonna get worse. Try them another day. Well guys, I wish good flows to all of you. Hope you don't have any swarms. Make lots of honey. Just meet all of your goals. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one. That hive is getting a new queen. Those girls, I just don't like at all. I don't like them. I do this for fun. They're not fun. Quit stinging me. Goodness, don't follow me around. That's just mean. They're all going bees. How many hives did I work? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I worked seventeen hives in this yard and didn't get stung. And I opened that one, I get stung three times in two minutes. No, no girls. No, I'm not having that. I'm not having it.